not yes. easy to get you off set. But no, it's fun. Um, introduce yourself and tell us who your character is. I'm Kate Walsh, and I play Annie in the film Honest Thief. Yeah. What drew you to this role? Well, uh, I loved the idea of being in an action movie that's centered around a love story. And I think that's what sort of makes it different than maybe anything we've seen out there before. Um, also, of course, working with Liam Neeson. Um, huge fan of Mark Williams, too. I love uh, Ozark. Um, I love him as a human. Uh, that goes for Liam, too. And basically, everyone on the set, is, it's been a real joy to work with everyone. Um, but I was really drawn to this idea of a love story and, um, and people, uh, second chances, you know, where uh, both the role that Liam plays and that I play are just two people that have a history and a past like, like we would at our ages and um, find each other. And um, it's sort of, you know, about what you do for love and how you grow and expand for love, with love, in ways that you probably never thought you'd have to or um, with, would ever anticipate, you know? And um, I thought that was a really interesting, beautiful theme to explore, um, especially in times where in a world that could be dark and tumultuous and, and to have this kind of beautiful story in the midst of craziness, is, it was really cool. But you, uh, your character takes, uh, Annie takes a few hits. <laughs> Annie does take a, she does take a, a licking and keeps on ticking, as they say. Um, that was also something that was really exciting for me. I was, I was on, if I'm being super honest, I was really drawn to this big action sequence and this fight scene with um, Kai, uh, Jai Courtney's character. Uh, and I, I, so that was really fun for me to work with Mark, um, who's our stunt coordinator. Uh, on it and um, and do that whole thing was really fun and exciting for me. You're, um, and of course, Shauna, who was my stunt double, who was incredible too. So at a certain point, she took over for um, some of the head stuff. You'll see. <laughs> so you've done a great job, I think, of blurring the lines from what was considered small screen mm -hmm. to big screen. And I don't even know if we have small screen anymore. I think we just have like, well, sometimes we have really small screens and people are watching things that were used to be on the big screen on a very tiny screen, <laughs> on their watches, on their phones. But you yeah. have such a rich history in television. That's, that's, yes. And now we're, you know, between all the Netflix and the Amazons and all of that stuff, where we're watching the same, you know, we'll watch Grey's Anatomy right next to, a, you know, a 13 Reasons. Right. So I, have you felt that those lines, are, it's not about television versus you know, feature film or, or Netflix movie? I mean, do you find yourself not having to, ex you know, even second guess yourself about what roles you take and what projects you get involved in? Well, I think it's just always about writing. And one of the great things about uh, TV, obviously, I'm not the first one to say this, um, is that there's it's a great area for writers and auteurs. And it's sort of like television, whether it, you know, be, with streaming and, it was with cable initially, but then with streaming as well, it went from you know, the network model, which is 22 to 24 a year, which has served a ritual of content for people to watch all throughout the school year, if you will, you know, September to, to May or April, um, to then being able to watch novels, really. It's like you could tell a whole story. So there's a beautiful thing about television. Mark Williams and I were actually talking about that the other night. Of, you can really delve into a character in a way that a film can't, um, and in a way that maybe even network television can't because it's more story-driven or action-driven or serial. Um, but that, that's the beautiful thing about television is that you can continue and, and explore character. I mean, Brian Cranston and Breaking Bad. I mean, there's so many ex great examples. Um, so, but then in a film, there's nothing like a film. After having been in TV a long time, there's also a beautiful thing to, um, things that end. <laughs> so, you know, a beginning, middle, and an end, an arc, and the intensity of, and there's certain, and the, one of the things I love about films, whether you see it on, you know, television or in a theater, there's certain things visually that you really want to see on a big screen, and there's, and I think this is one of those films, um, to see all of the great cinematography and action and 
uh, an energy and sort of tension of that. It's a great thing to still have the communal experience of watching something in the dark with strangers and, and also not have your device to distract you, which I think we're all, we're all subject to, you know? So talk about your collaboration with Mark. What was that whole experience like? And then moving on to your fellow actors. It was incredible. I mean, I, Mark has been such a real, an honor and a joy to work with. I, from the first time, we first, we Skyped, that's how we met, because I'm based in New York, and he was in LA the first time. The second time we chatted, uh, he was in, uh, here and in, in, in doing location scouting. So um, we just, I think I can say that we jibed right away um, in, in terms of what our ethos was, but the work ethic and also what kind of stories he's interested in telling right now and really jibing around the whole, the love story about it has to be kind of the centering, grounding thing. Um, um, for people to really care. And also just all of the characters though in the movie, whether it's Jeffrey Donovan or Jai or Anthony Ramos, they're all these men and, that are, and, and of course Liam's character that are broken in certain ways or going through their challenges. And so that, and, we, and I think Mark and I really clicked in that too, that there's a, that's your way into humanity is in the brokenness, you know, in this culture that often encourages us to strive for perfection or shiny, happy, perfect, or something, that there's this great, really, we want to see people that are broken and feel that they understand what we're going through or that we can understand them. And so, yeah, we clicked right away. And, um, Did you draw any similarities in your own personal life to, to the cast? Oh, for sure. I mean, I think at a you know, certain age, you're like, oh, this is part two. Cool. What's that going to be like? And there's a beautiful thing about that of like, oh, you... You know, if you're lucky, you have more choice, or if your health is good and you can really explore and do kind of, you know, I'm really fortunate and I, I feel like I live in a place where I can, in many ways, create my, my, my life, the life that I want, and whether that's of service or work or um, friends and family and love. And so I, 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 yeah, I'm interested in that and how people choose to live in their middle life, you know? How big a draw was it to work with Liam as well as, you know, when you first read that script? I mean, was that, were you like gunning for something, a character like that? That's yeah, it's cool. really sexy. It reminded me of something that you see in the 70s, like this great, you know, kind of a heist film and but with like, it was just kind of like very sexy to me and romantic and um, fun and, um, and the message of love and hope of course was like really powerful for me. And again, I keep circling back to that love story. But then also Liam, I'd worked with him on Felt, um, but so I knew him from that and uh, I'm just a huge fan of everything he's done and of him as a person. and. So to be able to work up close and personal with him was really cool. And uh, so that was definitely a big draw. Yeah. Because when people, you know, when they hear that Liam Neeson's attached to a movie, you think, big movie. But this is not really a big movie. It's this like is. a big little movie. A little big. Yeah. But it's, I think it has the bigness of an action film. And like I said, one of those great heist films in a way, even though it's kind of heist-ish. But of the 70s for me, when I, that's when I grew up really watching films, um, but that it has the intimacy of an independent film and the relationships and connections that, are, that feel a little smaller and independent in the best way. That really, like, yeah. What, um, have you had a memorable scene yet? Is there something that you've shot already that broke you? I mean, I'm almost done shooting. This is it. Um, uh, I, there's How been so the many. Beat up? That's what I the beat up, you want to know about the beat up scene? That, um, that was incredible. That was pretty memorable um, <laughs> for many reasons. Uh, but I, I was so excited to do that and worked on it with our stunt coordinator, Mark, as I said, and, and um, Jai was so incredibly 
in it to win it and professional and I felt very safe with him as well. And it's a very active, very violent scene. And so for me to be able to do that uh, was really exciting. And it was super, it was also, because it, in the nature of the action stuff, and because uh, this wasn't a driving scene, this was actually a physical fight and fight for your life kind of long sequence as well. Um, there's a certain intensity and, 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 and energy of that and, and focus and sort of heightened awareness that uh, happens that I think all actors want that sort of, or that you sometimes get, you get it from theater for sure, but um, rarely in film do you get that, or you get maybe certain scenes that you're just like at that fever pitch and your adrenaline's going and you're just like, wow. So it was really cool. The first day it went without incident. It was, it was the best part. I um, And they're like, well, let's just do this thing to get this one piece before editing where he throws you and we're gonna um, fake, you know, then they'll cut and do, the next coverage will be you like landing into this, you know, shelves. But for this piece we'll have, you know, our guy standing there with a pad, and you'll just try, you know, Jai will throw you into that. I'm like, cool, we work it out. And I remember thinking, oh, my jeans are a little long, and they're kind of under my shoe, and it'll, it'll be fine. So we did it, we did it in the last take. I nailed it every time. The last one, I slipped and hit my, <laughs> this is the first stunt, of the, and I hit my lip here on the edge of a door jam. And, my, and I was just thinking, I, everything got more quiet than outer space, I imagine. And, uh, <laughs> except for the sound of producers picking up their phones, um, I kept joking with them, like, were you calling to see how much it would be to replace me? They said no, but um, maybe a little bit. But it, no, they were really, really, it was, I just was quiet. I was like, okay, it didn't hurt, it didn't chip a tooth. Feel this, I was like, can I just get an ice pack? And then, uh, <laughs> I was back in Arnica and then I was fine. It was fine. It went down. It looked like I'd had maybe like I'd had a little bit of like a, somebody did a filler in my lip, but just one side, and then they had to take a call. So it was just like a little uh, fat lip for a minute. But um, that was pretty exciting. I was very happy that it was. Uh, yeah. And then I just, you know, it was my fault. I knew I was like, I just hem my jeans and I'll. Yeah, Jack, the yeah, segmentic, Jack and I were, became very, it was a, a, a quick, beautiful marriage, um, Jack and I, because then I, it's just, we, then this bulk, the bulk of the stunt work was the next day, it was broken up between two days, and I went off without it, without a hitch. I mean, there's some high kicks that I'm super proud of in there, um, I fought like an animal, it was really, really fun. That was probably, other than working with Liam, that was the, the most fun, that, that piece. And then Jack had to, and then I, yeah. He had some mending to do, though, just for my own personal clumsiness. After I got through all that, I was out for dinner that night with one of the producers and another actor. We had a great meal. Walking back, I'm texting to put on Instagram the name of my favorite restaurant here, and there's a manhole cover. I trip, fall, and cut my hand off. <laughs> After the entire two days of stunts where I got off, like, pretty much scot-free, so Jack had his work cut out for him with me. Jack is? The set medic, our lovely Jack. So the insurance budget went up just a little bit. <laughs> no, he just, he, he we, uh, when Band-Aids, there was like, a, the stocks may have like taken a, a you know, gone up for Band-Aids and uh, Neosporin, <laughs> Arnica. But so, yeah, so, it was fun. So when I read the script originally, when I just didn't really understand all, who the characters, uh, who the actors that were playing the characters, I, I almost felt like, Tom's character was going to be younger, and then when it was Liam, and then the two of you together, I said, okay, that's perfect, you know, in, in the sense of, I thought he was a Marine, so he was probably younger, but he's not that young in, in, in the scheme of things. Yeah. But the two of you, I thought, worked well as far as um, your ability to take Annie's, because you needed a lot of strength to get through the fact that you found out he's really not, he's a good guy, but he's a bad guy. Mm. I mean, there's a little bit of a give and take. Of course, yeah. we, we won't talk about the FBI agents who, who go rogue and go bad, but how, where was the strength of the character as far as overcoming the fact that he finally found out he's a bank robber, a serial uh, bank robber, and you still stuck through it. You got hit, you got punched. I mean, I guess, I know, she really did. Well, I think it's just, it, the metaphor is that we really don't know what we'll do for love. And, you know, I mean, even the Grinch's heart grew how many times? Like, I, 
<laughs> so I, I think that uh, we don't know what we're capable of until we're put up against it and that people are complex and I think that people are capable of greatness and smallness and darkness and light and um, that was part of the draw and appeal of the character and the story to me was that none of these people are straight up infallible and I think we're beyond the days in our culture and in uh, certainly in my life of hero worship and so um, it's not really how you do when people show you their greatness and their lovability and and, um, and all their great qualities but how do you deal when when um, when you realize that their weaknesses and their fallibility and their mistakes and their their darkness their ugliness how do you deal with that that's harder to love you know but Annie does it Annie I know, when I first read the script, I was like, who is this magical unicorn? I guess she's me. Um, no, but, uh, but it's been fun to, to play that and find that and tonally and also keep it grounded and real and intimate and real, like that it's very much this is happening and what would you, you know, what would you do? What's it like working with Tazzy? Okay, first of all, Tazzy is the cutest dog ever, but I've, my, I will tell you when I first read the script, not knowing that Tazzy is Mark Williams, the director and writer of Dog, I was like, this is the most detailed description of a dog in a film I've ever, ever seen. And I didn't understand that it was like his dog. I was like, wow, this is weird in the stage directions, like the description of the cutest dog ever. It was like this whole thing. I was like, all right, I, you know, okay. Like an, I just didn't know, and so it was very funny to understand that when I met. But Tazzy is very, I don't say that dog's very well taken care of, very well loved, um, and she is super, super cute. Yeah, she's like a real life teddy bear. So, yeah. Do you think the dog gives gives um, Jeffrey's character a little bit of a soft edge to him? Like yeah, there's a little bit of a wink there too. I think it's very humorous, but it's also, I mean, you're gonna have to talk to Jeffrey about that, because that was his number one scene part. <laughs> I was like, buddy, here you go. Don't worry about her stealing focus at all. Um, I worked with babies for like the better part of a decade. So yeah, babies and animals, you know, enjoy it, enjoy it. But she was pretty, is pretty sweet. And I do think it's always great to see like a, either a tough guy or, you know, a fed a guy who's serious as a heart attack with this little cutesy dog. I mean, especially Jeff, he's such a great actor and he's so stoic and has such a great kind of face of uh, like a, I think he's like so iconic. He's an old friend and I just love his work so much. But to see that face and that kind of calm groundedness that he brings to his character and his role certainly, and then you have this little dog. I love it, I loved it. So I'm, I'm gonna ask this question. Mm -hmm. It's not my question, it's fine. Would there be anything you would rob a bank for? Would, I do, would there be anything I'd rob a bank for? I mean, I'd probably rob a bank easier than you might think. Um, it just seems like fun, first of all, the kind of sheer naughtiness of it, especially the way, you know, Liam, uh, Tom, Liam's character does it. That just seems kind of fun. I mean, um, but anything, yeah, I mean, I'm not going to, I don't no have a hurt. list. No one gets hurt, you know. All right, so some money goes away, whatever. I kept joking with Liam, like, don't you want to at least buy me a handbag before you, like, something, if we bring all that money back? Um, yeah. It's kind so of fun. Shooting in New England, how do you like? Uh... Oh, it's been wonderful. Yeah, um, not only because it's an easy flight from New York, but uh, no, I love. Um, it, it was really wonderful to start here in the fall. We get to see the all the foliage and um, and just the energy of the area has been really cool. I hate to use words like energy, <laughs> but um, I am a California girl at heart, so I'm going to use words like energy. But it's like been really cool to. Uh, for me, one of the great things about being on location is meeting the people and the locals and going to local businesses. And so I, and, and one of the ways I keep saying is when I'm not shooting, to sort of develop little rituals or little schedules. So I, um, and so, uh, you know, production provided me the rental car and I was able to go on my time off to, I found a Pilates studio, then I found another gym that does circuit training and then I found these restaurants that I love. There's a great food scene happening. I mean, my only lament is like, 
in a way, it goes by really fast. This, this six weeks flew by. So there was this one place in Worcester that I saw. It was one of the colleges that was having a holiday pops concert, and I couldn't, didn't manage to get to see it. Um, but I really do love supporting local business, and and hopefully our shooting here wasn't too much of an annoyance, and that it was actually kind of fun or helped. You know, um, I think it's a great uh, Worcester, particularly, is a great little city. You know, and. Uh, like many cities in America, there's that time of re, kind of revamping it and re, you know, infrastructure and all that. It's been it's been really cool. This city's been through a huge metamorphosis. Yeah, a massive metamorphosis, and it's still, but it still has a small town vibe, which is cool. So, anything else we want to know about your character, you? We've yeah. asked all the right questions. I think so. Yeah, I'm always keeping it along. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right, so if you do rob that bank, please share. Let's oh, yeah, I see. would. I would be like a, you know, I'd be like, I'd be an honest thief. I'd be a little more Robin Hoodie. It's no fun alone. Like, you're like, look at everybody. Yeah, Dinner's on. That, yeah, no, my conscience, not knowing that I have nine million, that, I, no, not going to do it. <laughs> not going to do it. So he's, he's crazy. He conscience what? He, he not, said that he wouldn't give he it he back? Opened, you know, if he opened up a storage place and found nine million dollars, he would just not touch it because... Karmically? Well, I think that that is a different question than robbing a bank. I mean, if I could, I don't know. It sounds you like kind of fun. I mean, it. doing a fight scene was really fun, so I imagine robbing a bank would be really cool, too. Um, yeah. Well, you know, the Brinks robbery was shot in Boston back in 1973. Yeah. Wow. Well, I went to the Gardner Museum, too, and they were talking about, oh, my gosh. that's We did that on Sunday. It was my only trip into Boston. Um, John Singer Sergeant. Oh, that's what I went to see, the sergeants. And that, but we're, the, our tour guide was telling us that we were, of course, they have the empty frames where the big robbery was in the 90s. And I haven't listened to that podcast, but a friend of mine was like, oh, you must listen. So. so you know, Whitey Bulger. Yeah. So everybody thought that Whitey knew where those paintings were. Oh, really? Because that's yeah. what I said. They said they thought there was a mob connection. But, but no. Whitey Oh my gosh! But I was just doing that for you. So. It's so great. I hadn't I hadn't been in like twenty years, so I hadn't been since they did the new edition, which was stunning, incredible. And there's that concert facility there where everyone has a front row seat, and then we just happened to walk in when somebody was practicing their cello. It was kind of perfect. Yeah, yeah. Great. Thank you. Thank you so Thanks for your time. Thank you Thanks for your, for your patience. Time. Yeah.